Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart, and today I'm going to be talking about contrast paint, primarily the new range of contrast paint that's recently been added by Games Workshop. Now, I'm uh, I'm a big fan of contrast paint and a, and a fairly long-term user um, of contrast paint, but I wasn't an early adopter. I remember when the, the original contrast paints were released, I... Um, I definitely didn't turn up my nose at them, as, as many people did and, and as many people still do, uh, but I just couldn't see how I'd make them work uh, in the way I painted. Uh, I'm a commission painter, I, I paint you know, nearly every day of the week, um, I use the airbrush heavily, I have all kinds of techniques that I use and learnt over the years, and, um, and, and I looked at them and I looked at the way that they were being advertised to be used and I just thought that they're great, they're fantastic to, uh, as a way of getting armies quickly on the table but wasn't sure I was really going to use them that much but maybe one day I'll try them and they might make some nice glazes and I kind of forgot about them really for the first, first few months and then I started using um, a few of the browns and the, and the yellows for, 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 for just that, for glazes um, I started to use them on boots and belts and leathers and things and I, and I realised that uh, you could thin them with water very well. I, I stopped using the medium after I bought it early on and, and, and I really sort of grew to like those few colours and I used to use them for a lot of my leather recipes and things like that. As I started to paint more and more uh, miniatures of different scales, uh, mainly the, the epic battle stuff from, from Warlord Games, as many of you know on the channel if you're regular followers, that I've, I've got many painting tutorials and I tend to base them all with, with contrast paint um, and you know glazes and uh, working over a pre-shaded or pre-highlighted model depending on which way you want to, to talk about it um, was, was something I was doing with an airbrush anyway um, over tanks and over some inventory with, with thin paints it was a, a, a well-known technique and I thought well I can well, I can make this method work as well with a, a standard paintbrush on a, on a standard size miniature and it would give me a good mid-tone, a bit of a highlight and a shade in many cases as well. Once I realised that um, it wasn't a paint just for slopping over white or cream, you prepare your miniature well beforehand and get that pre-shade, pre-highlight right, it can take out so much time later on. And the number of touch-ups you do will really depend on the standard to finish you're after and the scale of the miniature and a whole number of other things. And then moving on from using it on the smaller scale miniatures, I started to paint more and more base layers at 28mm or 32mm. And it, it works really well at, at all scales. And I, I don't think I ever paint a single miniature all with contrast paints. Um, and I don't think I paint a miniature now without using contrast at, at a certain point. Now with 28 scale miniatures, I tend to not use the, the flesh tones and things. I tend to paint them in a more traditional way. But I definitely use the contrast paints for, for base colours of, of, of many of the other main colours. Um, and this new expansion of colours for me, or what I hoped, it is just that. It's a massive expansion of the range. I think one of the problems with the existing contrast range is that just many of the colours, you just, it just didn't cover what you needed. So I want to paint such and such, there's no corresponding colour for that really. Therefore I need to paint with the traditional method. With this new expansion, they, they've really covered an awful lot of the, the spectrum of colours and I think that that's where it really fills in. So what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is just take you through all of the new colours very briefly and what I think of them and how I think they may work. Watch the images, listen to me ramble on, stick it on maybe while you're painting or something and hopefully it will just give you a few ideas on, on, on the new range and, and hopefully it will give you a few ideas about if this range is for you, whether you want to get it all or just the odd pot here or there. And then at the end, I will, will delve into the, the internet rage, which is the changing of the Nuln Oil and the Agrax. I don't use a lot of shades myself, but I have picked up a new pot of Agrax Earthshade and a new pot of Nuln Oil to compare with the existing ones, and we'll see how those go as well. So I primed some miniatures with black and used a Zenithal um, directional um, highlight using white with an airbrush. And, um, and left at that really so to your eyes on the screen they look pretty much white there is a little bit of under shadowing that just gives a little bit of extra depth and that's tend to be the way I use the paints so I started off with um, the bad moon yellow which is a very bright yellow um, and it's a bit like a paint more than the, the some of the other contrast colors um, and I found the same with the imperial fist a little bit as well so they need to be maybe thinned but also it adds something a little bit different that some of the other contrast paints haven't before I suppose which is a very smooth way of painting yellow which is often quite difficult um, and, and similar with the the Ijon yellow as well 
so I, um, I probably won't go to them as quick as I would maybe the existing yellows in the range but they definitely have some uses um, I can see them being very good for the airbrush um, and then I sort of went on to the, the oranges and reds and I'm not going to list every single name as they come up on the screen you can, you can read that for yourself um, but what I did notice especially with these brighter colours is that they felt quite different to a lot of the initial contrast paints so a lot of the initial contrast paints worked very well over a, a sort of a, a white prime or a zenithal prime and you've got a good amount of tonal difference um, in the shadows now some of these without thinning them um, they just went on like a paint um, but a very smooth paint and a paint that gave you a fairly good single coat so um, slightly different and maybe not what I was expecting but I guess the darker tones and things that you have with the original colours um, just produce that more naturally and I found as soon as you started thinning these they, they behaved very much in a very similar way so I imagine it's to do with the, the pigment content that's needed for, for particular colours so I continue to work my way through the colours some some stood out more more than others but um, nearly all so far in that kind of brighter range um, I felt that they needed to to be thinned I was quite excited to look at some of the new blues um, I felt that the blues from the initial contrast release the, the existing range although they're all existing now I suppose um, not all of them that really stood out to me and um, they're quite the same way as, as the browns did they weren't initially you know they weren't immediately wow this is a really strong pigment a nice rich color some of them felt a little bit um, weak um, and I wanted something nice and, and rich and then we had some lighter colors so we had this pilar glacier which looks like a light blue in the pot but is very thin um, and we also have frost heart as well and I can best describe them as a bit like apothecary white um, I think they would work very well as shades for whites but both paints go on fairly th fairly thin and, and don't really match the colour that's on the, the Games Workshop website which you see popping up some of them match well when they dry some of them don't um, and then we continue with, with some more of the blues but I was definitely impressed with those two lighter ones because when you paint whites you don't want every white to be of the same type you know warm whites you can have really cold whites um, and I think now we've got a a few more um, almost shades to white now whether they're designed to be like that I don't know now I'm a fan of the the browns from the original range as I mentioned a uh, lots of times already and rattling grime um, would kind of fit into that range for me it does what a contrast paint does um, really well which is give you shadow and give you a mid-tone so kind of a, a blackish brown and then we have some some more unusual colors so this uh, dreadful visage was is, is another kind of um, almost a shade to white I think and a new black black legion so so far we have black templar from the initial range and I wonder what a new black would do and and, and for me this is a black that's more on the gray scale of blacks rather than blue so you might highlight with a with a the gray rather than a than a sort of a, a, a blue tones so it just gives you a different kind of black um, and then another one of the blues I probably should have grouped them better um, a couple of the blues actually um, some of them are really nice and quite vibrant and definitely richer which I felt those initial blues from the first release were, were missing and the Garax sewer then this is again falls into the category of the browns and I think nearly every single brown or yellow of that type in the range has been absolutely fantastic um, Crocs Corsairs is a bit sort of turquoisey bluish again just adding to that um, range of blues now really filling it out and it's, it's a good one it's definitely a good one and then Eldari Emerald as you can imagine is a greeny colour blue and both those last two are very typical contrast in terms of they flow nicely into the crevices and things and then we start getting to some greens and again the green range before was fairly dull and desaturated and this just adds a little bit of vibrancy to them and where I'll use them I'm not sure but um, the, the, these new ones you know, especially with this striking scorpion here they're much much brighter um, and are not as sort of dull as, as the others and the same with the mantis warriors again very very close shades but um, this is this is my feeling to it it's really they're really filling out the range and that gut rip of flesh there Again, that's another very light milky one that seems to work well 
um, over a white area so again you could have a very greenish tinge and then highlight it white again so it'd be good for for ghostly type things as well i'd love to put some of these through the airbrush and see how different i'm talking about ghostly type things um hex wraith flame so this was available before as a as a shade or a technical paint i think and in many ways i think contrast is replacing that it's replacing the glazes in the old um range and he's replacing the, the the you know the kind of ghostly colors briar queen jill there um similar kind of thing and then we've got a new night haunt coming up as well which we've also seen before as a shade and there we are that's that's them all done that's a test for them all it wasn't the most scientific test but just getting something on the paintbrush and onto a miniature is better than just looking at the pots and I wanted to just do this myself before I watched all the other reviews and things around um, and, and it just helped me get a better idea of what I think Games Workshop are trying to do with these and also you know where I may use them in the future and then one of the other <laughs> I suppose controversies would be around the shades people are quite upset that they've changed and and also the size um, you can you can see now you get 18 mils rather than 24 for the same price not much you can say about that really um it is what it is it might be enough to make some people not go and buy it um, and some people will continue to for me i was more interested in the how different how different they were in terms of of, of their formulation and how different they looked um we tend to think of them as washes very very often um i know gamers do a lot um uh, and games workshop may be thinking more in terms of what their name is a shade um and uh, they're, they're trying to change the formulation so it doesn't pull um, so what I what I set up was a the same the same kind of miniatures as I did for the contrast, but also a base because this is where I used Agrax shade the most, and I just thought I'd splosh them over, um, old and new, and compare and see what they look like really. Now the 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 null oil I, I couldn't really see any discernible difference if I'm honest with you, so I moved on from that pretty quickly, and the Agrax shade is the new one on the right. Um, there is a difference in colour. It's not wildly different and if you saw them in isolation you might not realize unless you use it an awful lot um, i did tend to find that it, it um, just stains the top areas less which goes back to my hypothesis about they are designed to be a shade rather than a wash to, to tint and to filter the whole of it so if that's what they're aiming to do i guess they've achieved that and maybe they're trying to help it not pull on the surface but people have to get very used to what what they're used to so in that sense they may well work better for what they're designed to do um, but people are very used to sloshing agrax especially all over their models and and it performing in a certain way so i can understand why they might be a little upset um, and then on the base as i said i did a did a similar thing split it half and half just to see what it would look like and there is a slight difference you can see again on the right hand side is the new one but not so much that it's going to show up in the processes that I do. I add weather powders and all kinds of things after that, and, and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So I will keep buying it. Um, I may look at Army Painter um, tones again. So overall, where are we at with it? Um, I think it's a very good extension to the range. Like I've mentioned quite a few times, I feel that the a lot of the brighter colors have been added and they may not work exactly like some of the other colors in the initial range which seem to be a little bit darker more based around one coat does all some of these feel like a bit more technical um, and that you may have to find different ways of using them I saw a brilliant example of someone painting yellow over a, of a, of a white prime and, and the, the beautiful one coat smooth finish of yellow it gave you so rather than working like a contrast with that shade and that highlight it just gave a really really smooth finish so it's about finding new ways to use these i will learn as i use them in terms of switching them out for the paints i've already been using most of them know um, because they are just different colors and they add to that range and like i said it gives me new tools to paint more paint more miniatures from a starting point for contrast or just for a different technical thing um, and i'll be really interested to see which ones go through the airbrush so i like owning the whole range would i be rushing out and buying them all if you're unsure no wait until you need a particular color and try it then i think the ones from the initial release overall are probably more all-rounders as it stands but i will learn more and i'll probably come back and revisit my thoughts on these in maybe a year's time or so the shades 
they're not wildly different. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Um, but I, I appreciate some people really don't like them. Do try out other things. Try out the Vallejo inks. Try out the other washes. Try out Army Paint and, and see which one you prefer most. Um, I definitely think with, with some ranges like Vallejo, you're less least likely to find them, change the formula very often. But that's it. Hopefully you found it sort of useful one way or another. Um, I know it's a bit kind of wishy-washy and it wasn't a kind of a full breakdown on how you could use every single paint. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you are new to the channel, please check out the other videos. May well be something there for you and consider subscribing. If you like the video, please do give us a like. It really, really helps us out. Take care and I'll catch you soon.